Romans 4 and 17 says something so powerful. Can we read it together? And it reads as follows. It says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Amen. Why don't you take your seat and just give God a praise for the reading of this word. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And I, I want to, amen, talk tonight about, amen, God is able. Amen. amen. God is able. If you believe he's able, tell him, I know you're able, Lord. Know you're able, Lord. And just the thought of that right there, you ought to give God a praise right there. Amen. So many times, amen, when we look at scripture, amen, if we ever get lack in our faith, bless your ushers, God bless you all. Amen. Give God praise for these ushers on tonight. If we ever get lack in our faith, one of the greatest things that we can look at is the story of Abram. How Abram, amen, God made him a promise. And when he made him a promise, the promise sounded so funny. You know, God can promise you something and it'll sound crazy. It'll sound funny. Amen. And it'll just seem like it's not going to come to pass. But God makes this promise to Abram and it takes 25 years for the promise to manifest. Amen. Ask your neighbor, say, what you been waiting on? I got news for you. God is able. That's a good place to give God some praise. And would you please tell your neighbor, never rush God. Sometimes we can rush God. Or how many know that God really doesn't need any help? Amen. We can rush God and we can we just feel like we got he got we're gonna help him get there. And God doesn't need any help. And when you look at Abram, Abram, amen, was caught up in an unawkward situation. God tells him. To sacrifice that that you really love. He tells him to sacrifice his only child. And Abram heard the voice of God. What I love about Abram, the Bible says that he wasn't all the way together. Amen. Just look around, right? You'll see some more like that, right? But he wasn't all the way together like we, right? Wasn't all, all, we are not all the way together. But the thing about Abram was he believed in God. Come on, somebody. Come on. He believed in God. And the Bible says, even though we cannot see Jesus, yet we believe in him. Amen. And because he believed in God, God gave him credit just for believing in him. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm about to get some more credit for believing in God. Because I got some situations going on right now right now that only God can do it. Come on somebody. That's a good place to give God some praise. And so when you think about it, when you think about it, that um, it's, it's, um, it's, it's almost like to the point that when we get our eyes off God, situations only come. So to make you get your eyes off of God, Sometimes you can spend too much time with people. Sometimes you can spend too much time in certain places. Come on. And sometimes you can spend too much time with particular things. All of this is to get your eyes off of God. And so Satan's greatest adventure is to deceive. And the first place he attacks a person is in their faith. Because you 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 can you can be a prayer warrior, a faith believer. You can you can you can be a you can you can be all of that, and all of a sudden something hits you, and you'll find out that you don't have the faith that you thought you had. Come on, somebody. But then something on the inside of you says when you thought yourself to be weak, you found yourself to be strong. That's a good place to give God some praise. Nothing personal. Look at somebody and say it's only spiritual. 
nothing personal, but you can't hang out with weak-minded people. Now you can speak to them, you could, you could, you could, you could, you could talk with them or whatever, you know. But if you are, if you're hanging out with them, that means they're depositing their weakness inside of you. And if they're not depositing their weakness inside of you, they're withdrawing your strength out of you. My God. And so we have to really, 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 really know that who we're around. This is why it's very important who you link up with. Come on. Amen. When you linked in, you need to know who you linked up with. Because if you linked in with people that really don't believe like you believe, it's going to be a struggle. It's going to be a struggle. And you can, as some people, you, you, you know, you just probably fall in love with their personality and their outer appearance. But the moment that you see that these kind of people, and these are optional people, somebody say optional. optional. These are, these are optional people that you really just don't have to be around. Now, come on, somebody. You, you just want to force yourself to be around. You're going to make yourself be around. Come on, somebody. These are optional. I'm talking about optional people. I'm not talking about people, you know, you live with in your household, but I'm just talking about optional people. You got a choice. And so you have to be very, very careful. But this, can you imagine Abraham? Abraham was told the most important thing. He said, I'm going to make you a father over all the nations. What is nations? People. Can you imagine Abraham getting a word like this and he would have went and shared it with other people that didn't believe like he believed? And come on, you know, he tells Sarah, he said, you're going to have a child. And she laughs because she was 74 years old then, 75 years old. And she laughs and she says, me at this age. Well, if Abram would have ran and told everybody what God said, and, I, and, and I'm going to share this prophetic word with you, and we're going to be out here in a few minutes. Come on, you have to be careful running and telling everything to people that God told you. Come on, come on. Because sometimes people can talk you out of your destination. Matter of fact, I believe there's some people even here tonight that there's some things on hold for you. God's ready to release those things. Come on, somebody. But the level of your faith has not been proven by your excitement. Because you maybe told somebody that was dull, boring, didn't care, didn't care about nobody, didn't believe nothing. And you shared these things with someone. And then all of a sudden, your faith level began to just drop. So our faith level is just really based on a meter. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I want to share something with you. Amen. I was looking at this and the Holy Spirit told me to share this with you real quickly. How when... You think about this, God is able. I don't think there's a person in here that can look back, go back down memory lane and cannot see what God provided for them. Come on, somebody. Look at somebody and say, that's why we keep coming and that's why we believe. So you had a level of your faith that you cannot let no one talk you out of your faith. So so prophetically, what's, what's the, 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 the times are coming in the walls are coming in they're coming in and 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 as my sister my big sister preached once only the strong will survive it's coming a time that the the, the faith the, the singleness of a person's faith is going to really be into a place that it's going to really show out and this is why it's very important that so many people have been in ministries and in here and, and I hate to just drop this word on you like this, but they messed up relationship wise with people doing things they shouldn't have done and they became embarrassed. And so they went to another ministry and now they feel okay because over there they don't know about it. And so I, so you see, you see, you see, all, all re and so they're doing fine now. They're doing fine now. And so what God wants people to do is not get in a position where you give the devil an opportunity. Not get in a position where you give the devil space. You know, we, we, we've seen so much throughout the years and you see this so much in church and they don't get preached about or talked about. And here it is. It doesn't get prophetically warned. That's a prophetic warning right there for people not to mingle and mess around like that. Because what happens is the devil deceives them and he does that. And then it becomes wages. 
it turns from sin to pride, and then after pride, then they begin to hit it. Come on, somebody. They hit it. They hit it. You don't see them no more. And you wonder, what is so-and-so now? What is so-and-so now? Because the enemy deceived them. <laughs> and so it's very, very important that we develop this thing, this place in our mindset that we have to try to be very, very, very careful. Somebody shout pop up. pop up. Things can pop up that you really wouldn't expect it and wouldn't anticipate it. Okay, yeah, no, no one, no one's perfect. People fall, but the Bible said a good man gets back up. He may fall seven times, but he gets back up. But we have to find out a place. This is one of the greatest things that I, 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 I discovered with me. And I want to help someone. And I, and I constantly do that. I always invested my fall. When I mean, when I first got saved, I was investing in my fall. I was investing like what, what, like like I used to ask my children when they would come up, and I, and I knew the answer. But I said, "What do you think would have been a better choice? What do you think you could have done? What do you think you could have said instead of calling this this one your brother this or your sister that? What do you think you could have said that would have been a little bit more better?" And when you think about that, you got to ask yourself in life, like, "What could I have done better?" Not beating yourself up, but preparing yourself for whatever's coming your way to trust only the Lord because what we have no confidence in this flesh come on somebody come on anyone say they got confidence in their flesh just get real mad get angry amen get angry your old childhood will come back out you come on somebody the old street you grew up on to come back out y'all not hand up in there come on come on that'll come out you be like Whoa, where did that come from so we have to walk into a place watch this relying and leaning on God in totality we have to lean on god in totality and so when you have people in your life watch this these are the kind of people you need in your life that hurt your feelings and tell you the truth if you don't have you got you got to have at least one of them in your life come on because if you come on if you don't have at least one of them in your life you're gonna go on and on and on to the break of dawn and next thing you know you're gonna be wrong but you need somebody in your life faithful are the wounds of a friend come on but the kisses of the enemy is deceitful so open criticism is better than secret love come on somebody and and so so when you think about this that that everything that we do regarding the lord watch this is absolutely and, and 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 emphatically has to do with faith you know, I took the an and F A I T H and I took that word once a long time ago. I said forwarding all issues to him. That's what I call faith. You know. And so everything that has to do with God, his voice, his presence, his his word, his atmosphere, okay, he, 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 even in the atmosphere of prayer and interceding, all has to do with faith. Matter of fact, you're coming out tonight had to do with faith no one was driving in the car saying you know i'm gonna go on but i ain't i don't believe nothing i'm gonna hear tonight <laughs> come on somebody what nobody what nobody coming here come on deep what nobody coming here saying i don't care what they say i ain't gonna believe it <laughs> nobody came here like that everybody and I, and, and I know this right i don't even have to get you to raise your hand everybody in here tonight came believing something was going to increase their faith and take their faith to a whole nother level come on give god some praise and so here we are with this story that that he said that um, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our, our father in the sight of God whom he believed. The God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. So Paul is referring to Abraham here and his faith. So it was Abraham and his faith. Huh? Shantae and her faith. Ernest and his faith, Steve and his faith, Jill and his faith, DeAsia and her faith, Bree, Brittany and her faith. So when you look at people, it's not just Gwen, okay? It's Gwen and her faith. Woo, come on, y'all get that? It's not just Chris, it's Chris and his faith, right? Okay, I'm gonna name all y'all names. Watch it, y'all ready? Here we go. It's not just y'all, but it's your faith. So look at someone and tell them, Say, I, I see who you are, but I'm really looking at your faith. Saying, if I see your faith leaking, I'm saying something. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Saying, if you see my faith leaking, tell me about it. Oh, come on, that's a, that's a word, y'all. Give God some praise right here. Come on. 
Come on. You need to write that one down. If I see your faith leaking, I'm going to say something about it. Come on, come on. That, that, that's, that's accountability right there. Come on, that's a real sister in Christ, a real brother in Christ. Come on, come on. You just imagine walking up to somebody and you'd be like, you don't look right. What you mean? You just don't look right. You're leaking. <laughs> what you mean you're leaking? Your faith is leaking. That's so everything we do requires faith. And watch this. <laughs> Sound like the baby says. Paul mentions this. He said how God had promised Abraham he would be the father. Y'all ready to this? Of many nations. So wait a minute. I'm pitching this. God promises Abraham you're going to be the father over a whole bunch of people. But hold up. Him and his wife didn't even have any children. His wife couldn't have children. But he promises Abram, you're going to be a father over many nations. God would tell you he's going to do something for you or be something inside of you when something else ain't working. It could, could it be that maybe you were focusing on what you really wanted but God was letting you know what I was going to do for you for what I need you to do mm, mm, mm. So he tells them you're going to be a father over many nations and now now we see his faith getting stirred now mm, mm, mm. we see his faith getting stirred Watch this. So tonight, the Holy Spirit wants you to notice Abraham's faith in God's promises and God's abilities. Write that one down. God's promises and God's abilities. Next time you walk inside these doors, next time you believe in God for anything, remember God's promises and God's abilities. Young people, y'all write that one down. God's promises. Y'all got phones right going text your stuff there. God's promises and God's abilities. It's going to bless y'all in the school semester. It's going to bless y'all when school starts. God's promises and God's abilities. Every time you think about this, it's going to increase your faith. Why? Because he said it. Come on. He said it. Come on. Come on. And so, so Every promise, y'all ready for this? God has made will be birthed. Watch this. Only because of your faith. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some of y'all got some things on layaway, spiritual layaway. And you don't even realize it. Some of those things on spiritual layaway. Guess what? God is just waiting for bigger faith. Come on. What depletes faith? Anger, pride, frustrations, disappointment, and last but not least, fear. If the devil can get you to fear, then he can get you to become angry. If he can't get you to become angry, he'll get you to fear. If he can't get you to become angry, he'll get you to operate in pride. If he can get you to operate in pride, he can get you to operate in fear. If he gets you to operate in fear, he can get you to become angry. He can get you to become angry. He can get you to become frustrated. Then he can possess, repossess, and he can also obsess your faith. Everyone that the devil has a hook and a stronghold in right now. Y'all ready for this? Their faith ran out. Their faith ran out. You ever see people that used to be with God? Come on, you ever see people that used to be bragging on the Lord and on fire for the Lord? It was leak. The faith was leaking. You look, you'll see a tire and you're wondering why you got to keep going every two and three days, putting some air in it. Nine times out of ten, it's got a nail in it. And so if a nail is in that tire, by the time you get to spend all those quarters and keep putting air in there, you could have just got a patch of there. Like, so the devil's job, watch this, is to put a nail. And what is a nail? A nail is a stronghold in your faith. Because a nail, if you think about it, you hardly ever see. Who sit and watch their tires turn? 
who tells somebody just, just back up? I'm gonna just look at the thread on my tires. It just look good. I wanna just look at how my tires are. The tread is rolling, and who does that? No one. So the devil, if it's a nail in the tire, you would never know it. And watch this. And watch this. The air doesn't leak out until the tire is not being used. That's the way the devil said, if I could put a nail, a hook, a stronghold in your faith, it'll leak out when your faith is not being used. Look at somebody talking about God is able. Watch this. And have you done? You could have a nice, you could have a brand new tire and run over the right nail. Come on, somebody. What that mean? What that mean? You could been in church for a long time. But let the right attack come. Oh, y'all better hear this up in there. Come on, come on. The devil don't care. So guess what? You got to make the devil feel just like he do. Since he don't care, you shouldn't care about him. Come on, somebody. How you don't care about him? Don't listen to him. Don't believe him. Don't let him lead you. You let the devil ride. Then he going to ask to drive. I don't know about you all, but if I get to ride and somebody, somebody show me that car and they ride me around, ride me around, I say, let me, I'm going to say, let me drive it. I want to see how I feel. I got that from my daddy. You know, he would always, he had to drive everybody's car. <laughs> but that's what the devil does. He was to put a hook in it to mess with the faith. And here it is. Watch this. Watch this. Remember, God's promises and God's abilities. Y'all ready for this? So we said every promise that God has made for you will birth based on your faith. So you want to know why strange arguments come up or disagreements come up or people trip or people cut in front of you and they give you uh, the ring finger and they, they do all these things. <coughs> they do all these things at you. You're like, wow, why, why, why? It was because something is birthing. It's because something is birthing. Grab this right here. Only believe. Watch this. Y'all ready for this? Only believe in your faith. If it wasn't impossible, you wouldn't need the faith. Oh, my God. Watch this. God's promises and God's abilities. Watch this. Here's the Lord to me tell you tonight. His promises, his ability is to bring life and existence to things that you thought previously was non-existent. You thought it never would happen. You thought it was dead. You thought it was over. You thought it was impossible. You say, oh, that would never happen. Look how old I am now. Look how long I've been waiting on this. God's ability is to bring a life existence to something you thought would have never existed. All because of your faith. You need to give God some praise right there. Ready for this? So tonight, the Holy Spirit is saying for every promise and the things you're asking for, remember the importance of your faith. Keep people out your faith. I don't care who that is. Now, that could be in your household. Come on, that can be in your family. Come on, that can be in your neighborhood. That could be on your job. That can, that can be in your church. Keep people out of your faith. What, what, what How can somebody get in my faith? You all excited about what the Lord done did for you and you feeling real good. All of a sudden, somebody just come and tell you, you know what? Uh, that, that wasn't God. And this, you know, and, 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 and so what? God did this for me. This and You got to be careful. Come on, somebody. Who you allow in your eargasms. Because once it's in your ears, it goes into your mind, gets in your mind, it gets in your spirit, it gets, it gets all in your heart, it gets in your spirit. And next thing you know, you don't believe like you used to believe. Watch this. Here it is. So remember the importance of faith in God's promises. And remember the importance of faith, God's supernatural creative power. God's promises and God's ability. Why? Because he's able. Here it is right here. Three realms of the three realms and the prayer of the spirit. I'm going to give to you tonight. Three realms. And then I want you to do something. That's going to bless you. Three rounds. So there's three rounds of prayer. One's a bonus. Here's the bonus. The first one is repentance. You know, sometimes we have to repent for allowing our minds to get carried away. 
Sometimes we have to repent for not believing like we should have believed. Sometimes, watch this, we have to repent because of a scare. Sometimes we have to repent because it seems like I'm just stuck in this mode. It's like I'm stuck and I just I can't go nowhere. I just, and so, so, so the reason why we have to repent because our stuckness did not come from God. Oh, come on, come on. Our standstills don't come from God. God is forever moving. He's like the wind. He's always moving. So when we're in a place, we have to ask God, we say, Lord, I, I repent from feeling like I'm not moving. I, I repent from not believing you that you're in control of my life. One of the greatest things that we can thank God for that we're on his calendar. My God. And when you're on God's calendar, God's, guess what? His timing is so, so, so relevant. His timing is so, so, so relevant. I can't even tell you about how many times that throughout the day that you just think on the Lord. Uh, you, you could be operating a machine. You could be, you could be, you could be at a computer. You, but your mind can just take a few seconds and think about Him. And when you begin to think about Him, my, you find yourself walking in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit. Because you're thinking about just how good he is. You get your mind off of it. Even though, even though you're, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah this, this is the greatest multitask you could ever do. While you're working and doing whatever you're doing. And you take up out a, a the, the, the Bible says that we're going to be changed in a twinkling of an eye. You can bat your eye like that. That's just how quick you can think about him. Just bat your eyes like that one. That's how quick you can think about the Lord. And get right back in the position and the things that he, this is how you walk in the spirit. Then you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh gets the fear. The lust of the flesh says, you know what? You know what? Uh, I need to do this. I need that. And it puts a rush on you. It put a demand on you. It tells you you're not going to have it. Imagine if Sarai, if Sarah would have said, that she laughed, but, there's, but imagine if she would have at least do this word right here. It would have never happened. She's, the thing she said was me at my old age, but she never said it would never happen. She she laughed. She laughed. And why? 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 So your situation may not be a child. My God. But your situation may be God needs to come in and do something about these bills. God needs to come in and do something about these kids. God needs to come in and do something about this furnace or whatever. God needs to do something about this car. Come on, somebody. He need to do something about this load, this weight that I'm carrying. And God is saying, I brought you here tonight to let you know I am able. I have the promises and the ability. All I need you to do is increase your faith. My God, is that powerful? My God. So tonight, 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 we're gonna we're gonna tap into the realm of the spirit. I'm gonna show you three realms, and there's, there's three realms in, in prayer and the spirit. And I want you to do the first thing we know we gotta repent. We gotta always repent. Repent repentance is when we hear God's voice. Repentance. People, watch this. Y'all People that don't repent stay angry. Ma shele cool. People that don't repent, they operate in pride. And they only talk about the things God did. But they never talked about the rebuke God did. They never talked about the correction that God did. So here's the three rounds of the spirit. After you repent, the, 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 here's the, that was the bonus. Here's the three. The first thing you want to do is ask. You want to ask. And then you're going to receive. Because because of your faith. So it's the, the realm of the spirit. Again, one of the bonus is repent. Okay, that first is a bonus. So that's just a bonus. We repent. But here's the three realms of the spirit. The first, the realm of, of the prayer life of the spirit. Three realms and the prayer of the spirit. Listen, y'all, this works. Some of y'all going to have praise report before midnight. Ah, so cool she ate that. Some of y'all going to have praise report before next week. This work. Repentance is always for, Lord, forgive me. I repent for my doubting. I repent of my fear. I repent of, of comparing, unfair comparison, comparing, my, comparing myself with Brother Baloney. I, I, I repent. So I repent of all that because what you have for me is for me. Come on, somebody. And saying you were the one that started a good work inside of me. And so you have to perform it until the day Jesus Christ comes back. And what will make my lo what will make my 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 show my weight lighter? Watch this. Y'all ready for this? What will make my load lighter? When I increase in faith. It takes faith to go to somebody and say, I'm sorry. It takes faith to go to somebody and say, I love you. It takes faith to go to somebody and say, you know what? You've been such a blessing. You want some blessing. Keep doing what you're doing. Why does it take faith? Because you're operating in the obedience of the spirit. Hmm? 
Is that powerful? So here's the first thing in the realm of the prayer life. Three realms of prayer life in the spirit realm. First thing is ask. When we ask God, it's going to be given. We're going to receive, brother. We're going to receive. Because our faith has went to another level. Thank you, Jesus. Here's the second thing. Seek. We seek. We haven't even seen where we're supposed to be looking because we haven't given the Holy Spirit permission to lead us and guide us and allowing us to operate in the realm of the Spirit with our faith. It, faith is more. It's more. It's more than us coming out because it's what you take back. It's what you need in the midnight hour when there's nobody around. Come on. It's what you need at 3 a.m. in, in the morning when everyone else is sleeping. You need faith because he's able. Who's able? To do what? Exceedingly. More than what? We can ever what? Ask for. We just said we're going to ask. So young people, whatever you ask for, he just said, I can give you more than what you're asking for. Otherwise, wait, y'all ready for this? What you asking for is not enough. It's not enough. Then seek him. Seek, rather, seek what you're looking for, and it's going to be found. It's going to be found. That's faith. Lord, I'm seeking, I'm looking, because I know I'm going to find it. I know I'm going to find it. Oh, Lord, here it is. Here's the next word. Knock. Boom, 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 boom. Here it is, Lord. Boom, 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 boom. Open the door for me now. Open the door. They said when I was coming up, I would not amount to anything. So I need you to open this door. They said when I was when I was in in, in school that 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 uh, I wasn't getting it. But I need you to open this door. Or they or they said they 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 said that I never have anything. So now I need you to open this door. Come on, give that bless you. Give God.